As John Lee would often say, when you're sitting here meditating, you're sacrificing your opportunity to make wealth outside. But you are creating wealth inside. As the Buddha said, goodwill is a monk's wealth. And here a monk can be any practitioner. Because it's a currency that you can create as much as you like of. It should be easy. May all beings be happy. May all beings understand the causes for true happiness and be willing and able to act on them. It should be a thought that you can think over and over again. But often we're challenged by other people's unskillful behavior, and it becomes hard. Or sometimes we have difficulty thinking goodwill for ourselves, looking at ourselves, seeing our drawbacks, thinking that we're not worthy of our own goodwill. But the Buddha certainly didn't encourage that idea. Goodwill has nothing to do with deserving. It's your free creation of the motivation to act skillfully, to not cause harm. And for your own protection, for your own well-being, you want to be able to generate as much of that as you can for yourself and for others. Because if you don't have goodwill for yourself, how are you going to have it for others? And if you don't have it for yourself, how are you motivated to do what's skillful, what's in your own best interest? So it takes some time to create some inner wealth. The Buddha's image is of someone blowing a conch shell trumpet. You blow the trumpet and the sound goes in all directions all at once. And as the description says, it's through the all surrounding universe, all up and down and around, abundant, free of hostility, goodwill for the entire world. And as with any form of wealth, you want to protect it. That's what the image of the mother and her child is all about. You have to remember that back in those days, if you're a woman and you had one child, that was your hope for the future. So you take care of that child with your life. I've heard people complain. One, they've heard that the image is saying that you should cherish all beings the same way that a mother would cherish a child. And the Buddha's not saying that. He's saying that you should protect your goodwill in the same way that a mother would protect her only child with her life. Because after all, there are cases where mothers don't love their children. We've seen that. But if you lived in a society where your entire hope for the future lay with your one child, you would protect that child as best you can. So be that fastidious in protecting your goodwill. That earnest in protecting your goodwill. Think of the image of the bandits cutting you up with a two-handled saw. And the Buddha is saying that if you had any ill will for them at all, you would not be following his teachings. Even with them, you start with them having goodwill for them, and then spread it out for the whole cosmos. You're protecting your goodwill, even as you're sacrificing your life. Because you realize your goodwill is more important. If you maintain your life but lose your goodwill, you're going to do a lot of things you're going to regret. 
But if you maintain your goodwill, even if you die, you're guaranteed a good place to go. So it really is worth protecting with your life. And you can be lavish with your goodwill for all beings. Whether they ask for it or not, you give them goodwill. For people who are small-minded, you give lots and lots of goodwill. For people who have done unskillful things, lots of goodwill. Because after all, who in this world has not done unskillful things? We've done unskillful things, other people have. If you think that only pure people deserve your goodwill, who are you going to extend it to? And there's that aspect of wealth where you don't have to calculate so-and-so deserves this much, so-and-so gets that much. Just give everything you've got, and you find that you have more coming. That's why it's such an excellent form of wealth. It's like those magic bags and fairy tales that you reach into, and the more you give to others, the more there is in the bag. It's different here, though, that you can give goodwill to yourself and not deplete the bag. So spend some time making your goodwill lavish. Abundant, measureless. That's the meaning of that passage in the the chant that the Buddha gave about spreading goodwill to snakes. When it says, "Unlimited is the Buddha, unlimited is the Dharma, unlimited is the Sangha." They're unlimited in their goodwill. Of course, the Buddha and the Sangha have goodwill, but the Dharma itself. You have to remember, when the Buddha taught the Dharma, he was very selective in what he chose to teach out of all the things he gained in his awakening. You know the image of the, the forest. When he goes, he's sitting in the forest and he picks up some leaves. He says, which is greater than leaves in his hand and the leaves in the forest? The answer, of course, is the leaves in the forest. He says, in the same way, the things that he knew through his direct knowledge but did not teach are like the leaves in the forest. Things that he did teach were like leaves in the hand. And why did he not teach those leaves in the forest? Because they weren't connected with the goal. Weren't connected with the rudiments of the holy life. Did not lead to dispassion, disenchantment, stilling, awakening, unbinding. Whereas the leaves in his hand did. The leaves in his hand stood for the Four Noble Truths. So the whole teaching of the Dharma has a purpose, and its purpose is the happiness of all. That's not going to make them happy by saying pleasing things all the time, but it is going to make them happy by giving them instructions and giving them things to think about that they will then act on and find true happiness. So the Dhamma has its atta, it has its purpose, and its purpose is goodwill, and it's limitless. It's not only for monks or only for lay people, only for Asian people or only for Americans or only for any group of people at all. It's for everybody. Because it's not specifically tailored for any one group points for a problem that we all have, which we're creating suffering for ourselves. And it's basically saying, look, this is how you stop. And when you stop creating that suffering, it's not just an empty, neutral state that you attain. It's true happiness, which goes beyond abundant, beyond measureless. But to get there requires that we develop some measureless goodwill. So think about that. 
You don't give just some, so much to one person and so much to another person. It's not the sort of thing that you have to divide that way. The wealth of the world has its limits. You can't give an infinite amount to everybody. But goodwill has that potential. You can give infinite goodwill to everybody. Each person gets infinite goodwill. And you can keep on giving more. You never have to run out. That's the best kind of wealth there is.